Still pretty close to 2200. 6.41 p.m. here on a Monday in Australia, on Australia's uh, east coast. Uh, here we go. We've got a 10-minute game against Sammy. Samay 59 is 21.67 from the United States. So we've got the uh, Queen's Indian defence of Fianchetto. My knight's a very nice knight, very pretty. I like my knight.
I'm threatening to penetrate this position. Um, he can't take the A pawn. If he takes the A pawn, he'll lose. So he can't touch this pawn. This pawn is poison. It's called the poison pawn. So I see he's going there. He's trying a little bit of a trick. Now I can play king here. And I can also play rook hits rook. Rook hits queen. That's not the best. Oh, king here looks good. Now it's still not easy for him. <laughs> I haven't made this easy for him at all. This is a very difficult game. Now I've got I've got queen takes rook, and uh, I I shouldn't lose. So. That's the easiest way to play. I'm in. That wins. Because uh, if he takes a rook, I've got the opposition. And if he doesn't take a rook, I'll take his rook and I'll take all his pawns. So that's the winning position against Samay59, rated 2167. G'day Nakoka. G'day Nakoka. G'day Carl and Magna.
It's my move here, and I want to win. So the correct move is king here, isn't it? And that is an end game. That's an end game. That was an end game. So I'm playing another 10 minute game now. New rating, 2177. Playing Raja Pavlovich, it's 2218. And he's, he's from Serbia. Got to be very careful with these guys. They're, they're tough opponents.
So we've removed his bishop on g7. He doesn't like this. You can see he does not like this at all. Now the big question is, should we take it off his knight? I like the idea of taking his knight. Then playing knight to c2. He's got to take back, he's got to take back with a c pawn. So now he's got some weaknesses that I can attack. I didn't have any weaknesses to attack before. Take him with the bishop. I'll still take his bishop. I'll still play knight c2 because I'm attacking all his pawn structure. He's taking that one. Okay, I'll take that. Okay, we'll play e5. He's got weak pawns now. He's got a weak structure. But whether I can take advantage of that or I've got time to take advantage of that, that's another issue altogether. Uh, I can play pawn to e5. But I don't want to. You want, yeah, it's h4, h5 could be dangerous. I think I may have to remove his pieces. On there, I can play h5 there, I'm okay. Play pawn here. I really think that that's a good move. I'll take that. And now I really want to get the open file.
He's got some problems. His uh, structure's under major attack. He's under major attack here, so he's got some problems. Raja Pavlovich, 2,218. Raja from Serbia. We've got five minutes and 12, and he's got uh, a few bits and pieces of time as well. Take with the rook. Can't see any attack for him. His castle's not operating. <clears throat> His castle not operating. It's very difficult for him. <clears throat> He's going to check. Okay, I've got king here. I'm threatening all sorts of uh, attacks. I've got rook takes pawn. I've got knight takes pawn. <clears throat> it should be a move that wins here. Rook takes knight looks like a winning move. The whole idea is after pawn takes, I've got queen check, and then I've got knight forks. Right, so his only move is, his only move is rook takes knight. And he's got a really bad game. No, he can't do that. I just check him. And knight fork him. So I'm on his rook and his queen. Okay, so now it's my move. I can take the rook. Threatening checkmate. I'm threatening checkmate. So now he can't move anything. I'm threatening his castle. He can't move his castle. So I can take his castle whenever I want. Now I can take his castle. He's, no, he's got no threat, so I can go for a queen. He's gone there. I, I don't like that. I, I've got pawn here. I'm going for a queen. Um, got queen check and queen takes pawn. It's 
but no threats. So I can go for a queen. Let's play king here though. Really try to upset his position. I got two. I got past pawns. What's he going to do against my past pawns? No threats. He's got no moves. He's got no moves and no threats. So it's really bad for him. And now my H pawn can continue to go for a queen as well. So I've got queens everywhere here. He's got 40 seconds left. I got five pawns. He's got three pawns. Two of his pawns are double pawns. Two of his pawns are actually double pawns. So Raja Pavlovich, I think, is cooked. My new rating, I get nine rating points. So I'll be 2186. Okay. He's not threatening anything. So I'm just going to push the pawn. I'm threatening to queen the pawn. It's a real problem for him. I'm now threatening checkmate, right? Checkmate. And he can't stop it. He can't stop the checkmate. So he's he's finished. He's finished. That's the end of my little mate. He's gone. So there we go. That was a good game. Excellent play. I enjoyed that game. Um, we could do a game review on it. Marvellous game it was, wasn't it? I'm do, I think uh, we'll have to do a game review on that. We're going to do a game review and we're going to see um, what, what, what I did wrong. It's very important to, to have a look at your chess games. Remember, if you want to improve, most important thing to do is even if you won a game, just pretend you lost it and uh, go in, into the chess.com. They give you, in chess.com, they give you this marvellous facility to be able to examine your games. And uh, I'll show you. I played this game um, at, wait for it, 93.9% accuracy. Here we go. I played at 93.9% accuracy and I played at a rating performance of 2,650. That's right. My rating performance for that game was 2,650. Okay. The engine says, great job completing the game review. And he says... I did a good job. I did a good job. He said, I really outplayed your opponent in that one. The opening was balanced. It was a well-fought middle game that I got the better of. I outmaneuvered my opponent in the end game. So it was the end game where I got him. I did the Magnus Carlsen on him. Okay. Rightio. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do the uh, analysis. Okay. We'll go back and get that board ready. So as you see, I played at 26.50 for that game. It was a good game. Uh, C4, C5, all book moves thus far. All right. E6 is more accurate. 
I castled. I should play e3 apparently. That's the best move. I didn't like it. But anyway, play a6. I was really, I'll be honest, I was really worried about that. I played d6. I should play e3 with the idea of playing d4. He played b5. You got a question mark. I played queen c2. This is a bad move. I recognise that I played badly here. A few incorrect moves. I played knight back there. Knight d5 was better. It doesn't matter though. I'm still going towards the same square. I played knight e3. Uh, engine says that's an excellent move. It's the second best move. e3 was better. He played knight to h6. Now, his move e6 was better. And bringing his knight there, right? That was a better idea. I played queen to d1. Here I'm, I've decided to sit back and wait and see what he's already made a few little inaccuracies. And I thought, well, I'll just sit back and see what I can do. I played rook to b1, star move, best move, right? It's the best move on the board. I played queen c8. Now, I'm not worried about him exchanging bishops. So I played b3, star move. He played bishop there. Knight to g5 was better. You remember that chess rule? Knight on the side of the board is bad. Knight on the rim is grim. Or, yeah, so his knight should have been in this position. He's controlling the square. Knight here with the idea of knight there looks quite natural to me. But to leave the knight here, it's a travesty of justice. So he, he played bishop there. I went bishop here, changed bishops. And now I took that with the knight, best move, star move. He took back with the bishop, should take with a pawn. And during the game, I did say that he should recapture with the pawn, didn't I, right? Anyway, I took his bishop, that's the best move, and now knight c2, and now he's got these weak pawns, this weak pawn structure here. Anyway, he took the bishop, that's okay, and now he played queen there, and that's, that's where he goes wrong again. He should be playing knight here, protecting the pawn, with the idea of h4, h5, right? And he should be okay then, because the position says equal on the side of the board. But he played this move, and now White's got the initiative. He played queen to d2. Not the best move. Rook to a1 was actually better, right? And now he plays knight there. So I, I should play e4. Do you know, during the game, I actually thought about that move. I thought e4 looks like the right move to play. But I played a3. And he pushed the pawn, so I took it, right? And now he I played rook a1, star move, best move. He played h5, and here <coughs> I played h4. It's not the best move. Rook a4 is even better, but I'll tell you what, it would be a brave man to worry about this attack he's got over there. He castled, best move, I played rook a4. He played rook hits rook. He should play rook b6 and try to double his castles on the b file. So I, I played rook there and I thought, well, if you want to play badly, I will accommodate you. So he took and I agreed, captured. Then he played queen check. And I just moved my king to h2 and it's the best square. He played rook there and I just played rook takes pawn. I'm just out playing him. He played rook there. So I played rook here. Threatening rook takes knight, right? He played rook there. That's a bad move. He should play e5. And now rook takes knight. And the chess engine has given me a double exclamation mark. Not, not one exclamation mark, but two, right? Two exclamation marks. And now you'll find that the best move for him is rook takes c2, right? That's his best move. Now, he took that off. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Uh, Engine says his best move was queen to a8, right? That, that's interesting, isn't it? Anyway, I played this move. Queen checks. So I get an exclamation mark. And then he has to go here. And then I leave my knight there and just... I played knight forks, right? 
a best move, attacking Queen in his castle. He moved back. You know, just played Queen takes pawn. The agent says, give him a check. But I thought, why should I give him a check? Why should I give him a check? Um, I wonder why the engine says give him a check. Okay, let's have a look at this. Engine says give him a check, right? Okay. The engine says give him a check, but he'll go here. Just helping him. I don't. I don't like that move. Okay. Well, say so he went there. Yeah, white's just winning, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, I just take his rook and I can win. I can win a million different ways, but I thought my move was better. A knight there, queen here. I just played queen takes pawn. I'm threatening checkmate. What's wrong with threatening checkmate? Right. And I, I'm winning the game. So it says queen h5 is excellent. And it says queen h6 check is best. And the reason why it says queen h6, so king g8, queen to g5, check king f8, knight takes a2. Okay, so it says queen, queen to h6, check, king to g8. Oh, it says if king e8, knight takes a2. Oh! Yeah, it says... If king e8 here after the check, because this is check. Yes, yeah, so, uh, I played knight takes, we played queen a8. Oh, the engine's saying, oh, queen h6 check is better. Okay, so I'll go back one square. And just have a look at it. So engine says queen h6 check is better, right? And it says if the king goes to e8, right? Uh, it still likes that, uh, yeah, it says king e8, knight takes a2, queen takes a2, queen takes a2, check, h8, check, king to d7, and uh, the queen move. So I don't know, what, I thought my variation was better. I think I played it better than the chess engine. <laughs> anyway, I've got du a double exclamation mark. And uh, I got a, uh, an exclamation mark as well, so I was quite happy. It's a good game. I don't know whether to save it or not. It was a really good game, though. But he played, he, he helped me a little bit. He played a few inaccuracies. So not a, a super game, but a, good, a game worth looking at. Okay, I'm going to play another 10-minute game. Right, we're looking for another opponent. A new rating, 2186. Our target is 2,200 tonight. Okay. Right, and I'm playing uh, FMJYVF. He's 2250.
Now the threat of the sun, night takes d5. It's a big threat. Knight takes d5 is a big threat. It's gone there. Now I can play this move. I can play knight takes pawn. To hell with it. Let's play knight takes pawn. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Ah, uh, take, take it with a check. We've got lots of pawns. We've got all these pawns in the middle. They are powerful pawns. I've only got to make two moves, like knight takes pawn, knight back. And as long, as long as I can play rook to d1, I'll kill him. I will. How does he stop knight check? How does he stop it? He can't stop it. There's no move to stop the knight check. It's a forced win. It's a forced win, folks. He's gonna he's gonna lose all his pieces. This is a forced win. He's gone. He resigned. We smashed him. Absolutely smashed him. He was 2,241 and we killed him. Oh, the poor bloke, he won't be able to sleep for weeks. After that loss, we're going to have a look at the game review. Let's have a look at the game review. We've got to find out whether we actually did play well or whether it's just our imagination. Because sometimes you think you're a genius when you play chess. But it's only because your opponent played badly. It's only when you put it, the, your game into the chess.com analysis room that um, the computer will tell you whether you in fact did play well and at what level. Well, as it is in this particular game, we only played at 85.9% accuracy, okay? So we played 85.9% accuracy. And what was our rating performance? 2,350. So in other words, the other game that we played before this, I played at 2,650. So, but the engine does say you really outplayed your opponent in that one. The opening was balanced and I pounced on the opportunities in the middle game. So in actual fact, the previous game was a much higher standard. Okay. However, right, so there we go. And we got um, one, one, uh, we got one double exclamation mark move. And I'll show that to you. The double exclamation mark move for that game was Knight takes b5. So that was the correct move, okay? So knight takes pawn, okay? So uh, that was the uh, that the icebreaker. That was the icebreaker. It was that the move that kicked him. Anyway, we'll go go and play one more game. Um new rating 2195, and uh, we're looking for an opponent. And we want to crack the 2200 mark. Okay. Now we've been playing at 2300 strength and at uh, 2650 strength. So hopefully, Ankit Alal 2175 might be our ticket to, um, to our new rating of 2200 plus. Playing d6, I take the pawn. We got the Sicilian. It's the open variation. Knight f6, a6. 
So we, and this is you when you're playing a ten minute game like this. We're playing unkit ally or ally unkit is from India, and uh, you have to play accurately. They usually know what they're doing in these positions. Strangely enough, they do. Um, I play e6. That's probably a main line. So Sicilian defense night off variation. As you know, named after the great Miguel Nidorf of Argentina. All right, he's playing bishop e2. We could we could go for the Fisher variation, queen to b6. Um, well, it's uh, a bit dicey, but um, nonetheless. And we could also play. Um, we could also play uh, just a simple bishop e7. So we've got several choices here. Uh, when we look at the position from a, a purely uh, technical point of view, there's no reason why we can't play knight c6. No reason why we can't. We're, we're not doing that great. Uh, usually you want to control that c file. Okay. Um, H6 looks okay. You can question the knight. Question the bishop. Let's just question the bishop. Well, ask the bishop, bishop the question. Sir, what's your bishop doing there? Because after all, in this position, what I've recognised is that black has got control of black squares. That's right. A little bit more control than what white has. So in other words, if he took the knight and the queen recaptured, black would be fine. Okay. So therefore, I've got the h6 move in, and I've got a free move. Okay. So now, big question is, I've got several moves at my disposal. I can play knight b file to d7. I can play queen bishop e7. Bishop e7 is a very logical move. Why? Because am I threatening knight takes pawn, right? Okay, so that's the question. In this position, is black threatening knight takes pawn? For instance, uh, here we go, if he castled, I could play knight takes pawn. He could take my bishop, I would take his knight. He would take my queen, I would take his queen. And at the end of it, he might get a check, I'll play king e7. Now I sort of should have some sort of equality. So that, that's a little bit of the analysis. Uh, well, well, I did say we could play knight takes pawn. Is there any reason why I can't take that pawn? I don't know. I calculated that I can take it. Now he's taken that pawn. Now, if I take the bishop, if I capture the bishop, I lose a piece. So I must take the uh, must take the queen, right? Take the knight. So I must take the knight. Now he he must take my queen. Otherwise, he's got no he's got no advantage that I can see, right? So he takes the queen. Now I take his queen. Now it's his move. He's got two moves. He's got bishop c7. And I've got knight takes pawn. See, so he chooses this move. Now I can play king takes bishop. Well, haven't I got an extra pawn? So in other words, bishop c7 was his best move, I believe, right? However, he's neglected to play this move. Shows that he hasn't got enough endgame experience. To, to my way of thinking, I've got the seven pawns. He's got six. I only need to play king c7. I suppose I have to be careful of a rook lift. Uh, that's a possibility. I'll grant you that. King c7. Maybe I've got to be careful of a rook lift. 
But king c7, rook d8, knight c6, or bishop d7, knight c6. It's going to take me a little while to get out. But if I play like Magnus Carlsen, I'll be all right. Okay, so I have to play like Magnus. Okay. Now white's got, remember, white's got a lot of activity, a lot of peace activity at the moment. His castle is on my king, it's on my d-pawn. He's trying to play positionally. Um, I, I'm going to have to play king c7. I, I, can't see, I can't see any other move at this stage, king c7. I've got to be able to shore up my d-pawn. Now, if he plays f5, I'm going to play e5. And he's gone there. Okay, I expected this move. Um, now I can play bishop d7 or knight c6. Knight c6 looks good. Okay, now I can take his knight. I should be able to take his knight. Should be able to take his knight and play d5. I'm activating all these pieces. I don't like it. Um, simply rook to d8. Encourage him to take the knight, right? Okay, we're going to do it this way. Rook to d8. So now the d pawn, the pawn on the d, d6 square is held, right? Now I can take the knight. I haven't got time to do anything else. I'm going to play bishop to d7. And now I'm going to take the knight. Now I'm going to play d5. Okay. Remember, I've got the extra pawn. He's got, he's got peace activity. Peace activity counts for a lot in chess. Uh, this is a, a, a move that attacks me for a short while. It doesn't do anything. It puts my pawns on the wrong color squares. I know. I know it's a, a weakness. But my weakness can turn into a strength very quickly. I've got bishop there. I should be all right. Now I can't foresee him causing me any problems. I'm going to play um, pawn here. I don't want him to attack me. <laughs> too it's too dangerous. The position is very dangerous. He knows my real threat. My real threat is pawn here. I'm going to play rook to d6. I should play rook to d7. I made the wrong move. Rook to d7. But it doesn't matter. I've got rook here now. I doubled the rooks. And once the rooks are doubled, he's in deep shit, right? Because I've got pawn here and pawn there. It's too strong. He can't stop it. He had his chance to stop it had he played c4, but he didn't. Now comes the pawn move.
Oh, he should definitely have played King here. King there was his best move. Trying to stop the pawn. This pawn move is too strong. He shouldn't allow this pawn move. I've got the extra pawn. He can't allow the extra pawn to move. Right? Well, we can take his pawn off now, right? So now we've weakened his pawn structure. And now we can play d5, the freeing move. This is this frees the black bishop. Very important, very important move. It frees the black bishop. He gives me a check, but it'd be wrong to put the castle in its place. We play king b6, and now... There is, there's no pin against my rooks. I've got double rooks on the open file. It's a semi-open file. However, I'm threatening bishop takes bishop. Um, my pawns are okay for the moment. Um, it could turn out that uh, he's going to get a pawn. I, I've, I've got to play this accurately. Rook takes rook. You, you, a bit, it's a mistake to take his bishop. Right? Why is it a mistake to take his bishop? Because we need to pinch pawns. We do. We need to pinch pawns. So rook takes pawn is the right move. I'm pretty sure. Rook takes pawn. Because we need to be able to threaten rook takes pawn. Check. It's very important. Very important to be threatening rook takes pawn. Check. Now rook takes pawn. We don't let the king come up. We can't give the king time. Time is very, very important in chess. Now I've got rook here. It's a bit passive. It's better for me to actually play a move like rook here threatens a pawn, I think. I think that's a slightly better move. Slightly better. It's not, not an easy position. I've got to be careful. Rook here is better. I've got to try to hold the pawns. Rook here. This is, this is the difference between winning and losing this game. Rook here. Um, if he plays mistake, bishop, pawn, take, oh, he's got this, that move. I've got to play rook here. That's the best move, I think. Uh, his best move is to probably take the bishop and play f5. Um, my best move is uh, rook takes bishop, actually. Rook takes bishop. The pawn takes. Rook takes bishop. Now he might be thinking we're going to go in there. Right, and he might be right. <laughs> he might be wrong. He might be right. He may be crazy, but we don't know yet. <clears throat> He's going there. Not a good move, I don't think. Um, I've got several moves here. I think pawn here might be. This, this is dangerous. But at least I've fixed his pawns down there. So in other words, he's, he's, ah, he's going there. Well, um, I've got rook here. This is my best chance to, to, to win. This is my best chance. Now I've got to attack. I can't go here. This is wrong. I must attack his pawn structure with rook here. It's very important that I do this. Timing timing's very important. Now he checks. I've got to move upwards because I've got to get... I have to definitely... Maybe king here's even better. Now if I go here, I can't get to the pawns. 
Uh, no, the rook, the rook will get to the pawns. So I need to clear the way for this pawn to queen. Right? That pawn's got a queen. That's my queen. So if I block it with my king, I can't win. Rook takes pawn. Okay. So now I need to queen my pawns. So I've got to play rook here to attack all the pawns so this pawn can queen. He's going to get pawn here now. I don't, I don't take the pawn and allow his king to take. I've got to slow him down. So I'm going to play pawn here. I want my pawn to go for a queen. Now, I can't take his rook, but I can play rook takes pawn. I've got enough time, just enough time to take it. If I get the next pawn, which I've taken, he must lose because he can't queen his pawn. And I've got two pawns, right? Two races, right? Um, he's got one, one type of move that causes a problem. I'm going to go rook here, stop his pawn. And now I can draw. Oh, no, he's played the wrong move. He should have played king here. That was the correct move. He's gone wrong. So now I can push. I can push my pawn for a queen. All right. And now he's threatening. He's actually threatening. Um, he's threatening to uh, push it. But I could take it. I could take. He's threatening rook here. Wins, right? His king's a long way away. So I'm going for a queen. He's going there. Well, I've got to push the pawn. This move is very important. Pawn here. Bad move. Pull, uh, pull him forwards. Oh, I've got him. He, he can't. His king can't get back. King forwards threatens king here. It's too fast. And now if he checks, king goes back. But I'm pushing the pawn with a tempo. It's a crusher. This is why rook and pawn end games are really super critical for timing purposes, right? It's all about the timing, folks. It's all about the timing. And now we just push the pawn forwards, right? He hasn't, he can't stop one, two, three, four. We've got him. That's it. King here. Connect. And he resigns. How's that for an end game? Yes! <laughs> oh, well, now we're going to go to the game review and we'll see what the engine says about this particular game and the way we played it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Matt Garwood said that was a classy act. Well, I think it was too, but... We're going to make sure, we're going to go back one second. I'm going to go back to the archive. I meant to go into the uh, engine room, into the chess.com engine room. I'll do a review. My new rating, we've broken it. We've reached 2,203. And our new goal is two thousand. So two thousand two hundred and three. And our new goal is two thousand three hundred. And I'm sure we can get there. I'm very confident. I'll show you why I'm confident of getting to that that uh, thing. Right here we are. Now this is why I'm confident. I played with ninety three point nine percent accuracy. So I'm playing international master standard. Right, 93.9. And uh, let's have a look at the rating performance for the game. 
I played at 2,650. Now, my opponent played at 2,500. So my opponent, uh, Ali Ankit uh, uh, from uh, India, I think it was, from India, he, he played really well, right? Uh, Ankit Ali or Ali Ankit, you played really well. Uh, Chess.com Engine says, he said, uh, you had a pretty competitive game there. Your opponent had a good opening, but you were on another level. It was a well-fought middle game that you got the better of. Your accurate endgame play outshined your opponent. So I did the old Magnus Carlsen endgame master thing, right? That's the super that's the super way to play. That's why end games are so important. That's why, as a chess.com coach, I'm sharing this knowledge with you, right? Okay? It's invaluable knowledge. So, um, right, let's have a look now. Uh, we'll get back to the uh, board. We'll set the board up. All right. There we go. So it was a good game after all. And uh, check out the analysis. It was pretty good. Um, I'll go through it pretty quickly. All book moves so far. Now, Bishop E7, star move, castles. Knight takes pawn is a question mark. There you go. So it's not the best move. Knight takes pawn is not the best move. And the best way he should have played it was he played bishop takes bishop. Best move. I played knight takes knight. Exclamation mark. Best move. He took the queen. Now take his queen. Now, what did I say during the game? I said bishop here is the best move. Did I say bishop there was the best move? Watch. See the arrow from the chess.com engine? It says bishop c7 is best. Okay. And that's the difference. You've got to understand these types of positions. When you get to understand these structures and uh, your, uh, your, your checks and balances on your end games, well, then you'll improve a real lot, okay? Anyway, the game continued. Takes their king there, star move, best move. He played rook there. I played knight c6, best move. He played, uh, he should play knight back. Uh, he played rook d1. I played rook d8, star move, best move. He played g, g6. I thought that was a bit quiet. He's missing opportunities. Yes, he should play rook to c3 with his piece activity. I played the best move. He played king there. I took his knight. Wasn't the best. Uh, he played rook takes. I played bishop. Oh, I should play bishop c6. I didn't. Yeah, uh, bishop c6 is far superior. This is a far superior move, bishop here. It actually threatens pawn here. Threatens pawn here. And black's winning, right? Okay. So I can see that now. But I'm playing under some pressure. Uh, I played pawn there. It's not the best. I thought he couldn't stop this. But uh, as it was, I made a mistake. He played bishop there. Um, my best move here may well be pawn here. Pawn here may be best. I'm not sure. Pawn there might be best. Oh, have a look. I played pawn there. That No, that a move I played was best. He played bishop back. I played bishop c6. Best move. He played pawn there. I played pawn there. Best move. He played king there. I played rook there. Bad move. Bad move, Johnny. I should play b5. Yeah, um, and now he, he should play C. Yeah, he should push that pawn. Then I doubled the rooks. I should push the. Pawn. He moved back. Then I, here I go with that pawn. He, oh, he should play king there. Remember, during a game I told you that was the only move to give him a chance. Okay. <coughs> he went backwards. Well, I went forwards, and now he's in trouble. I took his pawn off. Apparently, I should push. 
I was wondering how I proceed when I push. Oh, because if he goes, if he goes here, I might be able to play d5. That might be winning. It's advantage to black. Anyway, that's the uh, game. And uh, with that, we're going to uh, go into a raid channel. Look, checking out these chess channels. And uh, Alexandra Chess is uh, there. I think it's Alexandra Kostanuk. Uh, 